I mentioned before how Brian Giles was one of two non-Hall of Fame players or non-Hall of Fame-esque players to have a 400 or higher on base percentage and a 500 or higher slugging percentage with at least 7,500 career plate appearances. Lance Berkman is the other one. He attended Rice University in Houston where he played baseball and absolutely dominated. As a junior, he hit 431 and slugged over a thousand. His 41 home runs and 134 RBIs both ranked second all time. Naturally, he led his team to the College World Series and was one of the biggest college prospects entering the 1997 draft. He was selected 16th overall by the Houston Astros, whose stadium is a near 10 minute drive from Rice University. He, of course, dominated in the minor leagues and after a brief call up in 1999, stayed in the big leagues for good. Berkman played in parts of 15 seasons from 1999 to 2013. He played mostly for the Houston Astros, but also played for the Cardinals, Yankees, and Rangers. I'm going to go on the record and say Lance Berkman is probably the most underrated hitter of the 2000s. I know I said that about Giles, but now I'm leaning towards Berkman. Unlike how Giles didn't play his first full season until age 28, Berkman got started almost right away. After his brief call up in 1999 at age 23, Berkman barely missed any time after that until the very end of his career. He played over 110 games every season from 2000 to 2011, and just twice during that span did he have less than 550 plate appearances in a season. How good of a hitter was Lance Berkman? In that 12-year stretch from 2000 to 2011, Berkman averaged per season 30 home runs, 98 RBIs, almost 100 walks, while slashing 297 with a 410 on base percentage and a 548 slugging percentage. His 958 OPS is sixth amongst hitters to play in at least 1,000 games during that period. The only batters above him are Jim Tomey, Alex Rodriguez, Todd Helton, Manny Ramirez, and Albert Pujols. Also during that period, Berkman ranked 7th in adjusted OPS, 9th in home runs, 6th in RBIs, 2nd in walks, 10th in war, the list goes on. I believe it's safe to say Berkman was a top 10 hitter during the 2000s. But how does he rank all time? Amongst players that have as many plate appearances as Berkman, he ranks 17th all time in OPS. Every single player in front of him is either in the Hall of Fame, took steroids, or is Todd Helen. Also among players with as many or more plate appearances than Berkman, he ranks 31st in adjusted OPS, and he ranks just outside the top 150 in war. Including all players in history, Berkman's 144 adjusted OPS ranks higher than such players as Gene Carlos Stanton, Bryce Harper, David Ortiz, and Mike Piazza. His 943 career OPS also ranks 30th among all MLB players all time. Every player in front of Berkman in OPS is either in the Hall of Fame, took steroids, or is Todd Helton. He's also 48th all time in on base percentage, 40th all time in slugging, and 52nd all time in adjusted OPS. He was also an efficient walker. Berkman walked over 90 times in a season, 10 times. By comparison, there are only 5 players in 2021 to walk at least 90 times. His 1,201 career walks ranks 60th all time. In fact, there is only one other player in MLB history to have more walks and fewer plate appearances. I hope I convinced you that not only was Lance Berkman a top 10 hitter during his era, he is a top 50 hitter all time. Berkman also made the playoffs a lot. He has 224 career plate appearances in the postseason. That ranks 65th all-time for most postseason plate appearances in a career. Among those 65 players, Berkman ranks 3rd in OPS. 3rd. Even if we decrease the plate appearance amount to 100, Berkman still ranks 17th all-time in OPS. There are approximately 300 players in MLB history with at least 100 playoff plate appearances and Berkman ranks 17th. 
certainly one of the all-time greats in playoff baseball with one of the all-time clutch hits in World Series history. So the big question is, if Lance Berkman is such a great player, why do I think he's underrated? And why do I think he flew so far under the radar? Similar reasons to Giles. First, the counting stats. As big of a monster Berkman was at the plate and just in real life, his counting stats fall short of any noticeable milestone. He has under 2,000 career hits, under 400 home runs, under 100 stolen bases, and under 3,500 total bases. Bergman also only ever led the league in a category three times, doubles twice and RBIs once. I don't blame Bergman for the lack of black ink because of my next reason for him being underrated, the steroid era. Bergman's best years came during the steroid era. As impressive as his stats were, what good were they if many other players were posting the same or better statistics? Berkman was known for calling out the players for their use of performance-enhancing drugs. He's been an advocate for drug testing, expressed his frustrations over the entire issue in baseball, and denied ever using PEDs. Berkman probably remained clean his entire career. He never failed a test and always displayed power from college until the very end. Despite being a clean player his entire career, his accomplishments on the field were overshadowed by the PED users around him. Third, lack of playing time. Despite becoming an everyday player at a much younger age than Brian Giles, both him and Berkman have almost identical amounts of play appearances. Well, Giles played regularly until he was 39. Berkman's last full season came at 35 and retired when he was 37. Knee injuries slowed him down towards the end of his career, and he went on the disabled list four times in 2012 with knee injuries. It was never quite the same player after his 2011 season. If Berkman could have stayed healthy, maybe he sticks around a little longer and is able to achieve 2,000 hits, 400 home runs, and build upon his other stats. After all, he recorded a 959 OPS at age 35. It certainly didn't look like he was slowing down anytime soon. Lastly, another reason why I believe Berkman to be underrated was because of his teammates. Despite being one of the best offensive players of the 2000s, Berkman wasn't the most recognizable player on his team. He wasn't even the most recognizable slugger. Jeff Bagwell and Craig Biggio were finishing up their Hall of Fame careers just as Berkman was getting started. Bagwell even out-homered Berkman a few times in the early 2000s, and both of the aforementioned players took the spotlight away from Berkman, as did other potential future Hall of Famers Jeff Kennett, Roger Clemens, Billy Wagner, and Carlos Beltran. Roy Oswell emerged into the best right-handed pitcher of the 2000s, Brad Lidge emerged as one of the great closers once Wagner departed, Moises Alou received MVP votes in all three seasons with Houston, Morgan Ensberg led all Astros hitters in offense during their World Series run in 2005. The list goes on. Despite being one of the better players in baseball, and despite even leading his team in multiple offensive categories multiple years, other players took the spotlight away from Berkman. There is just too much talent and recognition to share. When I think of the best sluggers of the 2000s, Berkman just isn't in that conversation when he really should be. I've shown you the stats. What do you think? Is Lance Berkman underrated? Did you even know he was this good before clicking on the video? I certainly believe he's the most looked over hitter of his time. For a player that was this good for this long against major competition, he received only 5 votes on his Hall of Fame ballot in his first year eligible. That's less than 2% of the votes and was dropped off the ballot following that one and only year. That raises the big question, is Lance Berkman a Hall of Famer? That is really, really tough to decide. Let's look at the facts. There are 120 position players in the Hall of Fame with as many play appearances as Lance Berkman. Only 25 of those 120 have a higher adjusted OPS than Berkman. Continuing with those 120 Hall of Fame players, Berkman ranks just inside the top 100 in war, 41st in home runs, 14th in OPS, 36th in walks, 78th in doubles and RBIs. I think I can stop there. 
I mentioned earlier how Berkman is a top 50 hitter all time, and it shows. It's clear that while Berkman's production is off the charts, his counting stats suffer due to his low amount of plate appearances. This is evident by the fact that he ranks last among those 120 players in hits. The lack of counting stats shouldn't hurt him, but it's hard to ignore. How does he compare to other Hall of Famers at his position? Berkman played more games at first base than any other position, but also played more outfield than first base. Baseball Reference ranks him as a left fielder, so I'm going to go based on that. Berkman right now is 20th among left fielders all time in war, which is ahead of multiple Hall of Fame left fielders, but still below the average. His Hall of Fame related statistics fall just a bit lower than the average Hall of Famer at his position. I wanted to see if there was an MLB player who was close in comparison to Berkman to further the case of whether he ought to be elected into the Hall of Fame, and I think I found just the right guy. I'll post Berkman's stats as well as this mystery player's stats on the screen here for comparison. Think whether this mystery player is a Hall of Fame caliber player. I'll tell you right now, he's not in the Hall of Fame, but he could be one day. Pause the video if you want to keep looking at the stats before I reveal who the mystery player is. Alright, so this mystery player is Dick Allen. Allen fell one vote short of being elected into the Hall of Fame by the Veterans Committee this past year. If you believe Allen should be elected, then certainly you believe Berkman ought to be. Allen has Berkman beat on a just OPS and war, as well as an MVP and Rookie of the Year award, but Berkman has Allen beat on basically everything else. Berkman has the higher stats, the higher counting stats, higher MVP votes, the postseason clutchness, etc. The only real argument I could see is Allen put up his production in a pitcher-dominated era, while Berkman did his in a hitter-dominated era. It's a close call. But there's no denying that these two players are very similar, and if you believe Allen should be in, then perhaps you think Berkman ought to be in too.